Get in the smoke. Call 877-448-0433 to get on the air. Now, here's your host, Greg Rampy. Big B, Moonshine Band, Suburban Boys Let's go! I'm an outlaw. Give me two shots. We don't need a radio. All right, welcome back. 37 past the hour. This is uh, 877-448-0433. Greg at the BBQ Central Show. Dot com are the ways to get in touch with the show. My next guest runs one of the most popular barbecue and grilling blogs out there, aside from his main site, Nibble Me This. Also a VIP blogger for Grilling.com. He's on Johnsonville's Big Taste Grillers blogger panel. And he also blogs for Bushes, Traditional, and Grilling Beans. Friend of the show. Let's race over the hotline and welcome back Chris Grove to the show. Chris, how are you, buddy? I'm good, Greg. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. Chris, always appreciate you making time for the show. A lot of different things that we could cover here tonight, and uh, we should probably start out by saying, look, uh, you know, I host a show. I talk to a lot of pit masters who are out there weekend in, weekend out doing this competition thing, and one that I have maintained that I have never thought anything about doing anything like that, never want to get out there and compete, just want to talk about it, be one of those guys that talks about it never does it because that's what I do. Those that can do and those that can't talk about it on a internet radio show. You're stepping outside the comfort zone, though. It's Memphis in May. You have some other cool friends that you're going to be doing this with. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah, I think I'm probably an idiot for doing this. Uh, I've, I've been involved in barbecue. I've gone to competitions. I've taken the classes, and I know certain things you're not supposed to do, and I'm kind of doing a lot of them. Uh, I'll be uh, cooking my first contest, and I always figured my first one would be something, you know, a backyard somewhere. But uh, I'm using a cooker I've never used before. I'm not doing a recipe. I've done a lot. So I'm trying to screw everything up. So I'll probably come in first. Not only that, but you've decided to really take one of the most, uh, obviously, well, it's got a lot of history and there's a lot of mystique behind Memphis and May. But, you know, it's probably not like one of the easiest competitions to cook. You maybe could have chose something that had like 25 or 30 teams local, you know, somewhere where you are. But you really... Threw it all together. You're going to go down to one of the biggest events. That, I mean, parties like they're like crazy. Um, really kind of a, out of your comfort zone for sure, right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I really, I'm like you. I never thought I would even try uh, uh, the competition because I, I've seen what the guys do, the guys and girls do, and I know how hard it is. Um, and it's really hasn't uh, been something that I thought I wanted to get into. But, um, you know, when you get offered to be on a team, I get to be with uh, Neil Gallagher and, uh, Eddie Medlin and Robin Lindar is a, also a friend of the uh, Barbecue Central show. Yep. Um, I couldn't turn it down. You know, it's, this is a once in a lifetime shot. So I figured, how can I say no? So when you're uh, tasked with the fact that you're going to be cooking on something that you don't nor- don't normally cook on, is it something that you have availability around your local area where you can look at one and practice, or is this kind of <laughs> going in blind? <laughs> yeah, actually, I checked. We're going to be cooking on the uh, the uh, Gorilla Pellet Smoker. And um, uh, I checked with them, and they don't actually have anybody, uh, a distributor yet, in East Tennessee. And really the closest person to me was Neil, who's also in Tennessee, but that's like you know, six hours from where we are. So uh, uh, I'm going to get some uh, work on some different pellet cookers and then just hope for the best. Well, the good news is this. The Gorilla Pellet Cooker is going to be very user-friendly, so there's not going to be a huge learning curve because it is a pellet right. cooker. Uh, and it is producing uh, a lot of great backyard barbecue, as I can attest to. Not sure about the competition side, so that's something you're going to have to report back on. Uh, you know, But as you're looking forward to Memphis in May and your teammates and all this stuff, uh, are you? do you have any type of expectation whatsoever? Uh, I just hope I don't get the DAL category uh, winner thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just hope to be, uh, have a respectful uh, showing and have fun and uh, learn a lot. I'm also looking forward to helping out with the other categories. We're just cooking. Uh, Robin, uh, Eddie, and I are uh, heading up the People's Choice, which is probably the least stretch for a barbecuer like me or you, you know, because you're not cooking to the judges. You're cooking to general uh, population taste. So it's probably closest to my comfort zone than actual uh, turn in boxes and things like that that you have to deal with. So when you're considering, or you said you're going to be doing the people's choice, are you considering where you're going to be regional wise? And are you guys game planning and concocting flavor profiles that are indigenous to that area? Yeah, very specifically because the, uh, the three of us are all uh, fans of the Piedmont style sauces, but in general population, I don't think that's a safe bet to go with. So, uh, 
yeah, we are uh, tailoring our personal taste to a more of a, a general flavor profile instead of trying to say, you know, we're going to use this specific region. Chris Grove joining us here on the show. Mibble, Mibble, nibblemethis.com is the website <laughs> if you want to check it out. <laughs> Mibble, that's it'll be your like offshoot website. Um, there, were, there was a couple new products that you have gotten into. Uh, one of them I just happened to uh, have here, believe it or not. It's called the uh, Draper's Barbecue Mood Enhancer. Uh, Shane and I were talking about this. Oh, geez, it's probably been a couple months ago when he initially told me that he was going to get a beef rub out to market. I uh, imagine you've had time to actually try it out and give us some of your thoughts on it. Yeah, it's kind of irritating. The Shane, I got that, and I read the Mood Enhancer label, and this one <laughs> night after the kids were in bed, I rubbed it on my wife, and she just got pissed off. So it doesn't really uh, no truth in advertising. Hello. Hey <laughs> Um, no, I've, I've used it a couple times and I've really liked it. I've done it on, uh, steaks a couple of times. And, uh, uh, this past weekend I did, uh, two racks of beef ribs with it that, uh, came out really good. Um, I did, um, I, I like the flavor profile out of the bag. You know, it's your tradition, traditional salt, uh, paprika, onion, garlic powder, and that kind of stuff. The, I think the, uh, soy sauce powder kind of gives a, a, a unique uh, flavor to it, um, with the steaks, I, I found I like to add a little bit of black pepper with it as well. Uh, but the ribs turned out really good, especially when I used uh, the sauce with it. Let me ask you this, because when we talk about rubs and they're billed as both sides of the fence rubs, so that means low and slow and then high heat. Whenever a barbecue guy tells me that, I always become a little bit on the edge because traditionally, because you're not cooking at... Uh, nearly as high temperatures with the low and slow. You don't have to worry about that sugar caramelizing or anything like that. Did you notice any type of burn or meat welding to the grill because of the high heat and the <laughs> sugars caramelizing? Yeah, no, no welding accidents, no fusing to the uh, grates. Um, <laughs> no, I, I think it's because he uses the turbinado sugar, which you know uh, has a, a, a higher heat tolerance as it is anyway. Um, yeah, I, I was grilling uh, at uh, 500 degrees when I grilled my ribeyes and uh, had no problem on my big green egg. You know, you're you're definitely a big green egg guy, as cookers go. Name two or three things that you really love about that cooker that you would suggest. Because we had, that was one of the Survey Tuesday questions that I haven't even bothered talking about tonight at all. Was, uh, you know, were ceramic cookers overrated? And I had maintained that because you're getting two cookers in one, one that can hold a true low and slow barbecue temperatures, and then one that can go afterburner F14 Tomcat Jones, that it, it, you're getting two in one, so the price tag might give you a little sticker shock up front, but when you really, I guess, realize the potential, it's not nearly as bad. What do you think about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's up to uh, uh, the cooker. I mean, if you cook as much as I do uh, on the big green egg, I feel like I get my money back out of it, so I don't find it overrated. Um, you sure won't find me uh, taking it apart and hauling it over to Memphis in May. Um, so, you know, it's got that downside. But, no, I, I mean, I like the fact that I can do the pizzas on it. Um, my wife actually got her a big green egg uh, last September, and she uses hers for uh, baking. She doesn't want me to ever get my uh, uh, pork butts or anything greasy in hers. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they're just so flexible. You know, you can uh, – I mean, I know a lot of those things you can also do on uh, Weber Smoky Mountains. You can do them even in a kettle grill. But, uh, yeah, I just prefer the ceramic. We're talking with Chris Grove from nibblemethis.com. All right, one of the other products uh, that you were talking about were the Bush Bush's Grillin' Beans, uh, the sweet mesquite flavor. So, you know, me and smoke flavor and anything, I always get very skittish right off the bat. Uh, you know, what's the flavor profile of these things like? It's, it's kind of funny you said that because in the uh, original conference call with them, um, they mentioned that it did have natural smoke flavoring. And, of course, I had to ask the question because uh, I knew you would. <laughs> and, yes, it does have a, a, a liquid smoke to it. But uh, like some of the, the sauces that you've had that have a little liquid smoke into them, but it's done right, yep. uh, that's what I think they've done. And I do want to be out front with everybody and make sure they know I am sponsored by Bush Beans. Um so, you know, this, you know, I don't want people to see that later and think that I was paid to say that because I've used bush beans since, you know, my mom first taught me how to make barbecue beans. But um, the thing I like about the grilling beans, especially, uh, is that uh, during the week, it's great to just be able to, you know, when you're just grilling something for 10 minutes, you don't have time to make your normal barbecue beans that take, you know, an hour or 90 minutes in the smoker. And with these, you can have them ready to go. They have a great sauce. Um, but the uh, sweet mesquite, what I like special about them is they're black beans. 
and I'm, I like Southwest flavor profiles, but these are black beans with onions and um, red bell peppers, and they just simmer it in the uh, sweet and smoky sauce, and it, it really works. It comes out great with uh, as a side for fajitas and things like that. I love them. You know, when you were approached by Bush's Grilling Beans or just Bush's Beans in general, and I, I'm not sponsored by Bush's Beans, and it's the only beans that I buy. Um, I probably don't use them. In the traditional sense, I drain a lot of stuff out, but I doctor my beans up a lot. But as a base, uh, to me, you can't find any better beans out there, especially for the price, so I use them all the time. Uh, do you, I mean, are you excited to get approached by a company of this size and in the industry? Is it kind of gratifying to know that you're, you were writing initially just to write and now somebody has seen your vision and, and they want to get behind you like that? Yeah, that's that's the, my favorite thing about it because it's a company I've used for so long, and even before they ever pick me up, you can find mentions of them in there. And uh, I mean, when it's a product you believe in, I mean, it's real easy to say, "Oh, you want to pay me to say that? Sure, great." Um, but yeah, it's, it's especially you know when you hear from people like Kingsford and from uh, Bush Beans and uh, Johnsonville. I mean, they're products I'm already using all the time anyway. So it, uh, yeah, I love that uh, that I can do that naturally and not have to go out and actually ask people. Chris Grove joining us here on the show. Uh, you have a big thing going on April. It's a giveaway, and Central Lights are always in the mood for free stuff, especially if uh, you know it doesn't require them to actually do any type of uploading of audition <laughs> tapes for certain TV shows that we never know about anymore. Uh, what, do, what, what do people need to do to get on board with the April giveaway over at nibbledmethis.com? Okay, the, um, the April give, giveaway is uh, uh, Steve Reichland has a new book coming out uh, April 25th. It's Best Ribs Ever, 100 Killer Recipes. And um, Workman Publishing has agreed to give an autographed copy away on my blog this month. Um, all you have to do is go to the, um, I think it's two posts back with the uh, beef ribs, uh, and just leave a comment. That's all you have to do. And make sure you leave some way where I can get back in touch with you, like uh, if you have a uh, Barbecue Brethren Forum uh, handle or an Egg Forum handle, leave that so I know who you are. A signed copy of The Best Ribs Ever. What is that retail on the black market? With Stephen, not not with my autograph, but with uh, with Stephen Reichland's autograph. Oh wait, you wanted his autograph? I was just going to sign it. Ah, jeez. Oh, now, uh, yeah. Oh. I think it'll be about a million dollars. Wow, one of the most expensive gifts ever raffled off on nibblemethis.com. Well, is it the most expensive one? Probably, right? Oh sure, sure. Yeah, well, see, I learned my valuation from uh, what is those uh, uh, storage wars people. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so okay, and that's going to go off on four twenty five. So uh, yeah. now I'm glad you mentioned the, that that beef ribs post that you had because I was going through uh, the other day just kind of surveying the site and you always take such wonderful pictures and I must be the only guy in the world that does not find beef ribs like that. I find the dino bones because it's the only ones that BJ's carry they're called like the the uh the short, short the, short, the ribs. short ribs and they are just huge and flavorful. I can't find the ones that look like pork ribs but they're beef. Well, we get uh, here at uh, locally, we can actually find them a lot of time at uh, Walmart, um, Kroger's, just a, a general grocery store. But you can't, you just have to get them when you find them. If you go looking for them, they're not going to be there. Now, have you had the bigger version, those, uh, the, the short beef chuck ribs? Yeah, that was the first kind I ever tried. Um, and uh, I like those too. It's just uh, easier for me to find the others. Do you find that there is a dramatic flavor difference between the two? Oh, definitely. Uh, there's a huge flavor difference and uh, texture difference, I think. Um, it, it's it's a little harder for the uh, short ribs to get them as tender, but when you do, it's worth the payoff, and you get a lot more meat on the uh, the uh, short ribs. Yeah, my brother calls them, uh, what does he call them, the, the porterhouse meat lollipop because it almost <laughs> looks like you went out and tore out the, the underside of a cow. Uh, we're talking with Chris Grove. He is the writer of nibbledmethis.com. Also, you can find him on grilling.com, which is Kingsford, uh, also Johnsonville, and blogs for Bush's Beans. Now, uh, were you part of this uh, trickery and tomfoolery of uh, Clint Cantwell where you guys said this uh, hickory-fused propane? What is going on there? Yeah, yeah, I did. I just had a, when he sent the video, it was too funny, and I, you know, I knew that a lot of people would bite on it, and uh, even though we released it a little bit early on April 1st, but uh, uh, yeah, I just couldn't resist, especially with the technology cutaway uh, yeah. schematic he had. A lot of people buying into that right away. Uh, all right, uh, we're talking with Chris Grove again, nibbledmethis.com. Chris, always appreciate the time. Thanks for coming on tonight. All right, thanks, Greg. Yeah, you got it. There he is, Chris Grove.